Hello everyone, this is Madhusudan Raj, your host. I am back in front of you after a very long period of time to discuss one of the most important policies of the present BJP government that the Prime Minister has announced during this ongoing COVID-19 pandemic lockdown. So we all know that since the month of March, around 24th March, India went for a full lockdown to somehow abate the coronavirus. I don't want to go into the pandemic related discussion. I want to talk about this latest policy that the Modi government has passed. So during the lockdown and before the lockdown also the Indian economy was very much struggling. As we all know that the GDP numbers were collapsing uh, significantly since last six, seven quarters at least and the latest figure before the lockdown began was around 5% and inflation was also very high most importantly the unemployment rate was around 45 year high before the lockdown began and after the lockdown the economy is completely devastated the latest figures post lockdown GDP figures have now come out and they pinpoint the uh, GDP rate of Indian economy at around 3.1 percent but again uh, there are a lot of problem with that number also but I don't want to go into the detailed criticism of the GDP numbers that the government is coming out with for that I will advise my viewers to go and read the paper of former chief economic advisor of Modi government Mr. Arvind Subramanian where he pointed out that uh, this present government is at least by 2 to 2.5 percent overstating the GDP number. So if we go by that figure then uh, GDP is uh, either negative or around 0 percent. Most probably the GDP is into the negative. The Indian economy is into reverse gear right now. So after the lockdown and in the lockdown now they have started to open up the economy slowly. During the lockdown and in the last stages of the lockdown the business community and people of this country who were now very much harassed and now becoming poor they were very much expecting the uh, Modi government, the BJP government to come out with some kind of very concrete uh, steps, policies so that the economy can come out of this mess. So what Narendra Modi announced uh, regarding this is this new policy of making India self-reliant. Couple of days back Narendra Modi gave another speech in which he talked about what steps we Indians need to take to bring our economy out of this uh, mess, this recession, this depression in which we are finding uh, ourselves right now. So that I'm going to discuss in a while the statement of uh, Prime Minister and I'm going to analyze that from the perspective of economics but before that, let us talk about this policy of Atma Nirbhar Bharat or what they are calling, what uh, they are calling in English, self-reliant India. So first thing, this policy is not at all new. This kind of policies were also followed by the former Prime Minister, the first Prime Minister of India, uh, that was uh, Jawaharlal Nehru. So during his time also, Jawaharlal Nehru was following the policies of self-reliance or what he called... Uh, import substitution and inward looking policies. That means instead of uh, buying things from foreigners, we substitute the imported goods by producing those goods inside India. And inward looking policy also meant that instead of looking outward for any kind of help, instead of looking to other countries to bring Indian economy out of uh, the uh, mess in which it was finding during the post-independence years, so he said that we will look inside and we will develop our economy inside. So it was all about protectionism and license raj during those periods. And we all know what happened when this policy was followed by Jawaharlal Nehru. For 30 years the economy was into total doldrums. Inflation was very high. GDP number could not grow above 3.5-4% uh, what Professor Raj Krishna called the Hindu growth rate of 3.5 percent average for all those three decades. Unemployment rate remained very high and most importantly the income and wealth inequality also grew very rapidly. 
so as if we are not learning any lessons from that protectionist era of past that those nehruvian policies of self reliance import substitution and inward looking this present bjp government is again taking us onto the same path of self reliance now i have nothing against self reliance uh, per se but then we have to look at the whole policy from the economic cultural social and political perspective so that is what i am going to do into this uh, video analysis today so what i want to first discuss is what are the benefits of trading first of all because if you want to talk about because atmanirbhar bharat because self reliant india means we are going to basically either stop trading with outsiders outsider means those who are not part of the indian nation state that means the foreign countries countries like china countries like uh, bangladesh countries like taiwan countries countries like america anybody who is not part of the indian nation state the indian government is either going to completely stop the trade with these countries or they are going to put heavy restrictions on the foreign trade that we are doing with this country that means they are going to put in place lot of protectionist measures protectionist measures like uh, imposing a very heavy import duty on these imported items that are coming from let's say china also they are going to impose anti dumping duties things like countervailing duties or they are going to restrict the import by using the methods of import quotas that means only certain amount of government license quotas can be imported from all these countries so basically the protectionism wall is going up in india again so what i want to discuss first is that what are the benefits of trade why trade and exchange is very important in our lives then i want to discuss what will happen when we stop trading uh, right now we are going to stop trading with the outsiders so if we stop trading with the insiders similar kind of uh, consequences will follow when we stop trading with the outsiders then i want to discuss uh, critically analyze the statements of the indian prime minister mr narendra modi let us see whether the statements the arguments that mr narendra modi was you know making few days back make any sense makes any sense or not so let us start with the benefits of trade first of all we all know that human species was living in jungle for 4 million years ago as far as the evidence is goes so we were our ancestors they were living in jungle a solitary life at that time there was no kind of exchange going on primitive societies were there then we came out of those jungles and we started living in savanna uh, where we started making societies because there were no trees in savanna savanna means grassland in grassland it is very difficult for solitary animal to survive because uh, other predatory animals will kill them so that that is the reason why it was important that human beings got together so male and female came together they built up the family which is the basic social unit of any society and then out of family came relatives kin system and out of the kin became a village village became a town town became a city city became a nation and then internationally we are trading with each other before all this protectionism and nationalism started some 10 15 years ago so what made you know our journey from the jungle to this modern world possible was this trading why trading is important because of one simple fact for example nature has bestowed us with different kind of skills variety of skills and variety of natural resources to different geographic locations so for example india has a lot of reserves of uranium india has a lot of reserves of thorium for example now other countries like america they don't have reserves of thorium or uranium but let's say they have a lot of reserve of oil they also produce a lot of uh, food grain for example now they require our uranium and thorium because they want to run their civil nuclear plants which which generates electricity for them and we require their food stuff we require their oil because without food and without oil we cannot survive and without our thorium and without our uranium and without uh, as historic our uh, historically our maize and masalas they cannot survive so our spices were 
the major item of trading with the outsiders and in exchange of those spices we used to get the things that we did not have for example kings and queens will import arabic horses because they wanted them to you know fight in wars so they will send our spices abroad and they will buy uh, horses from abroad so this is how trade makes our life possible what i can produce i can trade with you i can produce that in surplus and by trading that surplus with you i can get the thing that i cannot produce but you are producing in similar fashion you can get the thing that you are not producing but i am producing by producing the things that you are good at producing so you for example uh, my audience is very good at producing tomato and i am very good at producing wheat then what is going to happen is you are going to produce tomato and i am going to produce wheat and i am going to exchange my wheat for your tomato so that way we both can have wheat and tomato so we can clearly see that trade is what makes our life possible trade is what makes us rich before this trade took place i was only you know consuming wheat and you were only consuming tomato so my life was primitive my my sustenance was very primitive my standard of living was very very low because i was only consuming one item but after trade now i am consuming two items i am consuming wheat and i am consuming tomato similarly before the trade took place you were consuming tomato only and your standard of living was very low but after the trade now you have tomato and wheat similarly i also have tomato and wheat so similarly if we can just you know ex extend this logic to the whole world then we can enjoy all the products that we cannot produce on our own we can buy that product from outsiders from strangers from abroad from chinese or from you know thai from malay from americans from italians from chileans from brazilians from uh, timbuktu whatever the country is we can buy those products that they are producing and we can sell them the, the products that we are producing this way we all can become rich so immediate benefit of trading is that it makes life possible it it makes us rich it makes us wealthy and and it, it allows us to consume more and remember that is the ultimate uh, goal of any economic activity consumption is the ultimate goal of any economic activity so this is the first benefit of trading the second benefit of trading is now before i discuss what is the second benefit of trading i have to go back in past and tell you that how during the primitive times we used to get the things that we did not have so for example if you live in one village and i live in another village now the things that you have i want it but you are not trading that with me but i somehow want it so what i will do is i will attack you and i will burn down your village and i will kill all of you and i will snatch i will loot and i will rob your things that i wanted and that is how i will get the things that i wanted from you but you were not ready to trade with me so before the trading started we used to basically go and kill each other there was lot of warfare and lot of violence uh remember that the stories that tribal people are very peaceful people they are all false anthropological research tells us that this kind of noble savage is just a utopian socialist idea there there are no noble savages savages are savages so one way of getting the things your thing that i want is to i will come and kill you and i'll grab whatever you have but this is violence you know do we want to live into this kind of world where we go and kill each other to get the things that we want but you are not ready to give it to me my answer definitely is no i don't know what your answer is if your answer is also yes that uh, we want to kill each other then i i will advise you to stop listening to this video analysis and just uh, uh, go back home but if your answer is no if you don't believe in violence if you believe in peace then trading is what is going to give us peace so when we the another peaceful and a very civilized way of getting the things that we want from each other is to trade it is to exchange it your village your village will trade the goods that you having with me and i will give you my product so that way without fighting we can get each other's you know goods so trade makes peace possible so the first benefit it makes life possible it makes peace possible so peaceful life is what all of us desire so trade commerce gives us that and not only that 
it also results into cultural development so remember uh, everybody every society is different we all have different kind of cultures now some cultural values are very amenable very important for progress so for example the western culture they produce the ideas of individualism and their property rights and their human rights now these values are very important for human flourishing because fr freedom is the basic prerequisite for any kind of progress we all have a lot of potential inside us but we require freedom to make that potentiality into actuality if somebody is going to stop us from living our life then we are not going to become fully human we cannot enjoy our life fully so by making peace possible what happens is different kind of cultures will also have exchange with each other so i am a merchant and if i go to london then i see that londoners are living a very different kind of life because they have different kind of values i'm going to learn those values those cultural values and i'm going to bring those cultural values into india and i'm going to change my society i'm going to bring change i'm going to bring cultural changes into india and those values when they will come here and change the indian culture india will also flourish and progress like the britishers for example or, or japanese or chinese culture whatever good i see in those societies i'll bring it over here so trade makes this cultural interaction also possible and by doing that it allows our societies to flourish right for example if indian society has some bad things then we can re we can remove those things as i have said you know somewhere else also that india achieved independence because the people who were fighting for freedom in india they all were influenced by the western values of individualism and human rights and most importantly liberty freedom the ideas of non violence also uh, gandhi learned from outside india had peace uh, messengers like buddha but then how many people listen to them but anyway so this kind of trading and commerce will also allow cultural interaction and that will benefit all of us so trade ultimately benefits all of us uh, if we are going to now stop trading then what is going to happen is it is just going to create more chaos now because all these benefits are gone if you are going to stop trading with outsiders then we are not going to be able to consume those things that they are producing if you are going to be you know if you are forced to buy the indian products then indian products are costly and low quality so we have to spend more money the money that we are going to spend over here we cannot spend on some other indian manufactured items so that means local manufacturers are also going to suffer because of that another thing is foreigners will not be able to buy our products because uh, they also require purchasing power if we are not going to buy from them then how are they going to buy from us because they are also going to remain poor and uh, one poor person cannot buy the items of other poor person so this is how trading is going to basically reduce our standard of living by stopping trading with outsiders india is going to become poor so yes we can become self reliant we can produce things at home but we are not capable of producing everything in home right now imagine can you produce whatever you are consuming in your day to day life on your own you cannot i cannot produce this tie i cannot produce this uh, microphone i cannot produce this uh, shirt or i cannot produce this webcam or computer or a mobile phone or whatever i am using right now none of these things that i'm using in my home right now i can produce on my own so that means basically if i stop trading with chinese then i have to go naked probably because india right now is not in a produce you know in a position to produce anything on their own okay and even if you are not going to completely stop the trading then what is going to happen is the damage is always going to be there even if you restrict the trading then progress is going to come down our standard of living is going to come down the opportunity cost the unseen effect is always going to be there so basically india is going to become poor economically when we are not going to trade with the outsiders so atmanirbhar bharat policy the policy of self reliance is going to make us poor one thing second thing the political fallout of this policy we are already seeing that is going to be this as i told you before we started trading the method that we used to use to get the things from other person is to go and kill them 
So as the French liberal economist Frederick Bastiat say, when the goods will not cross borders, armies will. So when we are not going to trade with Chinese, then what these Chinese people are going to do? Anyhow, they want our products, they want the market, so they are going to come and attack us. Right? So that is how they are going to get the resources that they want, because you are not giving them peacefully, so they will have to take it forcefully from you. And who is responsible for these kind of warfare? Our own policies of becoming self-reliant. So nationalism is just going to result into war. See, remember, hating your neighbor is always going to result into war. Hatred is not the answer, is not the solution of any problem. Love is solution. Peace is solution. So instead of uh, you know hating Chinese or instead of thinking of not buying Chinese products, we should be treating with Chinese people because Chinese people are good people. Not everybody is bad over there. It is the Chinese government and the Indian government, the politicians who want power, Chinese politicians and Indian politicians, the state officials, they are making us fight. We don't want to fight. We want to trade with China. India should trade with everybody. And that is how India is going to become rich. During this lockdown, what is needed is all kind of foreign imports. Because remember, Indian economy depends on import because India is a poor country. It is still an emerging market economy, if you use that latest word. It is still a developing country. We are not a developed world. And even a developed world requires a lot of imported items from abroad, raw material, capital, you know, financial capital, for example, and physical capital, and most importantly, human capital. India does not have all the skills and technical know-how that is required for progress. I mean, the recent report of Mohandas Pai tells us that India has lost this demographic dividend right now. The human capital is no longer capital. It has become a liability. According to his report, some 10, 20 crore young Indians are right now without any kind of marketable skills. That means the skills that these Indians are having is absolutely, you know, are useless. We cannot use those skills. You know, remember, we are living in the time of fourth industrial revolution, where we are talking about artificial intelligence and automation. Robots are handling everything. And in these kind of era of uh, automation, Indian laborers are nowhere. They are absolutely unskilled. The young people are without any kind of skills. They all, what all they have is degrees inside their hand, useless paper degrees of BAs and BCOMs and BSCs and MBAs and CAs and law degrees. These, these skills are absolutely useless for the economy. So India has already lost the demographic dividend. We don't have the kind of labor force, the skilled labor force, high IQ labor force, smart people that are required for any kind of progress. So we require human capital from the outside. We require physical capital from the outside. India is a poor country. And whatever savings we are doing, the Indian government is squandering that saving into all kind of useless programs. Because India is a big totalitarian state. Our government size is very big and they are into all kind of welfare policies. So whatever savings we are doing, it is not being channelized into productive you know, activities. That saving is squandered. So we require foreign capital. We require foreign physical capital, we require foreign financial capital, most importantly we require foreign human capital. So instead of stopping trading from outsiders during this lockdown and in the post lockdown period, what we should be doing, we should be trading with everybody and inviting all kind of help because we need that help to get out of this mess. So trading is not going to, you know, halting the trading is not going to help. It is going to economically damage us. It is probably going to start a war with China and Pakistan and Sri Lanka. Now remember, China is already becoming very aggressive because India poked them by removing the 370, Article 370 in Kashmir and declaring Ladakh as a union territory and they started building up all kind of infrastructure. So China is becoming aggressive. Even Nepal is becoming very aggressive now because China, India is becoming internally weak now when the nation state is bankrupting itself. Right when it is insolvent, then everybody is going to become aggressive because they see a chance of taking a revenge of all kind of uh, past uh, injustices. So we need help from people. We don't need to fight with everybody. A fight, a war with China or Pakistan or even Nepal right now will completely devastate the Indian economy. What we require is peace. Remember what Krishna, Lord Krishna said. He also said that there is no substitute of peace. 
peace has no substitute we should always always demand peace but instead of that what we are saying is indians are becoming very jingoistic and they want to attack every other country forgetting that they are not in a position to fight any kind of war because remember poor country cannot fight any war so halting the trade self reliant india policy is going to start some kind of war and that war is going to devastate the economy what we require right now is opening up of the economy so anyway these are benefits of trade and what will happen when we stop trading now what i want to you know very quickly analyze uh is this uh, is that these are statements of narendra modi that he gave a couple of days back so what narendra modi said so for example he said that and i'm going to read i'm going to quote the simplest method to be worked upon at present is to induce indians to use their own products and get markets for indian products in other countries so what he's saying basically is this let's try to understand what he's saying he's saying that we should not import from outside but we should export now is this possible if you have studied economics then you know that these two things are mutually exclusive means if you do one you cannot do the other if you stop import then you cannot have export because remember why i'm saying that i'm going to tell you and if you stop export you cannot have import because you import by exporting exporting will give you income which you will use to buy the export similarly if you are not going to trade with the others like let's like say for example we stop trading from china with china then chinese will not have the purchasing power because their income is lower now their product we are not buying so their income is lower they are not able to sell the product now if chinese people are poor relatively compared to the situation uh, where we are trading with them then what will happen if they are poor then how are they going to buy our exports you stop buying from them they will stop buying from you because they are poor they don't have the income that they need to buy your product right and you cannot sell them because they are poor you cannot export you are also poor so see both countries are going to become poor one thing is not possible you cannot stop importing and go on rising your export with the world because if i want to buy from america then i have to sell to america and if you want america to buy your product then you have to buy their products first by doing that we increase their purchasing power we give them more money and by using that money they are going to buy our products so no import no export both these things are actually tied together they are not separate things so narendra modi basically what what he is saying is absolutely contradictory in nature it is mutually exclusive it is nonsensical does not make any economic sense at all i don't know why any economic advisor is not telling him this simple thing that sir you cannot do both things you cannot just stop buying from outsider and think that they are going to buy your products you cannot stop import and go on rising your export these two things are not possible simultaneously so for example if you are nationalistic and if you want to become self reliant then china will also want to become self reliant then they will also say that we are also going to not import anything from india but we will export everything to them so how are you going to do with this you know how how is this possible they don't want to sell you right or they don't want to buy from you you don't want to buy from them but you both want to sell to each other so this is quite funny this is kind of very illogical thing so what narendra modi said is is contradictory in nature it is not possible somebody please go and tell him i am sure if he you know if you will make him understand then he will realize because this is very simple logic right okay what second thing he basically said okay second thing he said that every citizen of this country has resolved to turn the current coronavirus crisis into an opportunity we have to make this a major turning point for this nation what is that turning point is saying it is self reliant india as i said this is not the time to become self reliant and there is nothing great in becoming self reliant also there is nothing wrong in buying from others that is what we have done all the time remember we have progressed through all these years by trading the evidence of trading goes to you know hundreds of thousands of years ago you know even 
two lakh, three lakh years ago, people were trading with each other. And that is how we become rich. So, because nature has not endowed us with all kind of similar resources and similar skill set, inequality is present in nature and that inequality, you know, is a boon because that is how we trade with each other and benefit each other. Remember, Mukesh Ambani also requires services of poor people. You know, he lives in Antila, which is 27 floor building. And I, I hear that around 300, 600 servants are working there. So servants need Mukesh Ambani and Mukesh Ambani needs servants. I need my maid and uh, she needs me, you know, because if I don't pay her, she is not going to survive. And without her services, I will waste my time in all kind of useless activities. I am a teacher. I am a university professor. I better go and, uh, you know, teach and make more money. And by using that money, pay for this maid services. And she is very good at maid services. She cannot become professor. I cannot become maid. There is opportunity cost. What Ricardo called the law of competitive advantage. So I will produce what I am good at producing and I will sell that and make money and by using that money I will buy the things that I cannot, you know, uh, nicely produce, productively, efficiently produce on my own. And similarly all, everybody will do and trading will make us rich. So becoming self-reliant, there is nothing great in becoming self-reliant. So this is what ultimately the policy of Atma Nirbhar Bharat is, you know, going to become. It is going to be a big disaster for this country. After the coronavirus lockdown, we require all kind of foreign help. We should trade with China. If China is progressing by trading with them, we are also going to become rich like them. We should trade with Bangladesh. We should, we should trade with America and Russia and everybody. Right? We should trade with Pakistan also, no problem. And by, become, by, by trading with each other, we are going to establish peace. And we are going to become rich also. And I think that is what we all need, isn't it? We need prosperity and we need peace. You know, if we need war and if we need poverty, then become Atma Nirbhar or become self-reliant. So that is the ultimate choice that Indians are facing in front of them right now. If you want to become rich, you want peace, trade with everybody, free foreign trade, allow that internally allowed free trade do not stop the trading allow exchange trading is what makes life possible but if you want war and if you want poverty and misery then go for this option of Atma Nirbhar Bharat or self-reliant India so that is what I have to say for today I will come back again and discuss more about these issues thank you very much for watching me goodbye